The field of aesthetic and plastic surgery has evolved dramatically in recent years. Wrinkles and sagging skin once called for invasive surgery, but now can be solved with a simple injectable. Yet not all of these injectables and fillers are the same. So here to sort through the world of facial injectables is Dr. Susan Vasco of Columbus Aesthetic and Plastic Surgery. Welcome back, Doctor. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Gail. We have talked about these the last 10 years, and it's really the, the field of what is offered is growing. And you see there are a couple new products that you're offering. So what are yes. those? Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, well, actually, I should back up. It was many years ago. There's a product called Sculptra that was uh, introduced um, and FDA approved uh, at that point for uh, people with HIV that had lost a lot of fatty tissue in the face. And it was a way to try and build soft tissue um, to uh, counteract some of the side effects of medication. A couple of years ago, that was that same product was Sculptra was FDA approved for cosmetic use. And so it's a little different than trying to fill a line. We're actually trying to add volume to the face in general. So the two types of folks that benefit from this that I'm seeing are uh, people that uh, are older and they don't want surgery, but they want a little younger, fuller look to their face. And the second are maybe younger people that are very athletic and have uh, lost a lot of fatty tissue in the face and look a little older than their age uh, just uh, uh, from that situation. So uh, it's injections in the office that works over a few months to actually build soft tissue in the face. Last two years, uh, usually two or three sessions of injections five weeks apart and expect to last a couple of years. Uh, the second uh, brand new is Voluma, uh, which is here, and that is uh, a hyaluronic acid filler similar to when we were filling the um, you know, the deep lines in the face. This is made for the mid face. And so primarily up here, uh, maybe a little hollowness under the eyes, but it's uh, typically this cheek fat pad that is um, uh, injected with Voluma. Uh, also expect to last two years, at least two years. What kind of result is are you seeing and is the, the patient happy with that result? Because these are different. They're more, as you say, full face, yes. as opposed to just sporadic parts of the face. I think patient selection is key in that um, in the people that you know the right patients for that that it absolutely is worth it and they see very nice results. So you again look at the patient and their needs. You also know what works best with what kind of patient. Yes, yes, absolutely. And um, the uh, so you know again new products but nice additions mm -hmm. uh, to our field and. Uh, you know, definitely adding something you know in our armamentarium for the um, patients that are looking for injectables that we didn't have before. It's interesting that you do both. Mm -hmm. And um, do you see that th because we have so much more available now that many women are opting to go this route, the non-invasive route, than surgery? Well, there's a couple um, things that feed into that. One is the economy, in that uh, when times are tight, people may choose to do an injectable rather than surgery. Uh, the second is there's a trend for younger people to come in and just start get little things done early on so that, um, that you know maybe they're delaying the time when they may want something more invasive. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's also interesting how long these last. You said two years. Yes. To me, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, typically with, for example, uh, Juvederm, which we use in nasal labial folds oftentimes, or you know, here we call this, these the marionette lines, uh, we would tell people about eight, nine months. So uh, it's very nice for patients to be looking at things that are gonna last a much longer time frame. And then there's, of course, Botox, which mm -hmm. has been around a long time. Are you finding new and different ways to use it? Well, Botox has been around decades, and we think of it as something relatively new for cosmetic use, but it was approved originally for therapeutic reasons. Uh, the, um, uh, yeah, the first indication cosmetically, we, we, what we call the 11 lines, mm -hmm. and then uh, we also, you know, it's a very nice thing to use in the crow's feet, and also to give a little, called it like a chemical brow lift, where you, if you put it here, uh, for people that have a little droopiness of the brow, it actually can elevate the brow without having surgery. There is so much out there, and, and I know, as you said, it depends on the person. So the best way is to have a consultation with you, and you, we've had your information up there, doctor. So if folks want to reach out to you, they can do so. Thank you. Great. Thank you, doctor.